All right, back for uh, match four here. Yep. All right, this is a good hand. Again, we'll kind of see what our opponent is playing. Okay, just kind of work it out from there. Okay, Augur. Let's see what are your reveals. Agni Warp. Hmm. Interesting. So this is blue black. Do I risk the Tireless Tribe? Ooh, to have land. Uh, or do I play Augur? You know what, I'm just gonna jam Tribe. If it dies, I don't, I don't really care. And if my opponent just does something stupid, um, I can just combo him out next turn. And again, I have three lands, so I don't wanna I don't keep any of those, though, again, with a circular logic draw, maybe that's, maybe I should change that. I'm also looking to draw fairies. We'll definitely need to see if my opponent has fast mana. Doesn't look like it. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> this is probably going to be an easy game. I'm just going to kill him right now. All right, <laughs> yeah. The opponent got screwed there. All right, my opponent's playing blue black. Um, from what I saw, I saw Agony Warp, Augur Bolas, and Muldrifter, so probably an Augur build. Sorry, a um, Grimag Angler build. This is probably blue black alchemy. I think this is probably a good matchup. Uh, I just want. I think I think I want Augurs for sure, and I kind of want to trim on the combo pieces a little bit. I don't think I like Eagle Drowse that much. Because, uh. I don't think I like Eagle Drowse that much because. They're gonna just have a lot of lands and. A lot of their removal just kind of kills you. It's not like. It's not like a red deck, which is building up removal just waiting for, for you to flip. I mean, do you have some removal like that? Against blue black, it's more just like they can just they can just kill your Tyler's tribe straight up. So uh, I think this is fine. Just putting in extra augers. I'm gonna do my best to try to get the augers to hit. So I'm gonna be trying to set them up with uh, the ponders, preordains, and brainstorms. And then I'm just gonna try to value my opponent out. Okay, so I don't want to play my famous screen just yet because I don't want to die to Chainer's Edict for no value. Oh, wow. This is amazing. So, Preordain lasts so that I can guarantee hit it with um, the Augur. Definitely not shuffling. That's like... Those are those probably are the three best cards I could have seen there. So, that's a very good hit. Now, I think... So, um, I think for... You know, blue for Delver players, you probably are okay with. You know, you're not you're not worried about blue black. 
and uh, you know, you're okay playing this long game because you know you you play blue red or blue, mono blue. You're like you're you're pretty good against these removal decks. Uh, but for tribe players, I think they probably panic a little bit too much. Like they think that maybe, like I'm thinking that maybe they think that the fairies are not enough to stop blue black, but they are. So you know, I think uh, you should feel you should feel safe in in like these type of grindy matchups. All right, so I already have a dispel, so I think I'll just take a preordain. My fairy miscreants. Yeah, but uh, you know, if you're uh, if you're coming to this deck from the uh, do I trade my spell setter for a counter? I think that's fine. If he doesn't have it, it's great. If he has it, that's unfortunate, but not too bad. I'll tr be trying to find another creature. Okay. Definitely want both of these. All right, let's try Spell Sutter. And I won't tap out. Let's try Ninja here. Yep, and this is why you should really, really be scared of blue-black. If you're coming from the tribe side, forbidden alchemy. I'm just gonna counter that. Okay. Yeah, like it looks like the opponent might be just outvaluing you, but actually. You know, like, you shouldn't be scared of big cards. Sure. Because, like, you know, you shouldn't be scared too much. I mean, you kind of should be scared of Muldrifter, but... Otherwise, uh... Okay, well, that's very good for my opponent. But, uh, you know, like, uh, Moldrifter is really good, but it costs a lot of mana. Okay, so I do want all of this. I think. Hmm. take yeah I think I'll just take the the last spell setter
and try to find, to find some miscreants. Alright, so let me shut out with my opponent's small drifter. Okay, inside and out. Hmm. If I gush, it's probably fine. I definitely want to get something on board. I can cycle this inside out for two mana. And if I have to discard, that's not too bad. Uh, I think it's a discard. I think I want to hold up circular logic for. Um, in case my opponent draws another Mold Drifter. Alright, this is definitely very good. And now my. Oh, my opponent's attack on Mold Drifter? I mean, that's just gonna be letting ninjas through in the long run, so that's very good. Alright, this is a fine place to be. So the thing, the thing to with these blue-black decks is, you know, you don't really have to worry too much. about dying because they're very slow at killing you. So, yeah, plenty of time to try to just, you know, beat them. Cycle inside out on my opponent's ball drifter. Alright, this is all fine. Uh, I'll take this spell, sure. I'll just keep on spell stuttering. I think my opponent probably has another Mold Drifter here. At least something big. Well, that is pretty much it for my opponent, I think. Well, I guess I don't have to gush yet. Maybe I want to save it if I find a ninja. Uh, do I want Tireless Tribe? Not really. It's a creature, but I don't even want to discourage my... Like, I want to encourage my opponent to attack, so... You know, I actually don't want the ninja on the board. Uh... Okay, well, this is not terrible. Um, by not terrible, I mean quite reasonable, quite, quite, quite good, actually. 
inside out. Yes. Catalyst tribe. A bunch of counters. Okay, this is a position from which I can grind my opponent down. Doomblade. Uh, I think I will counter that. That's fine because um, I kind of if I let if I let my Tireless Tribe die, I can't cast Circle Logic. So if he has a Muldrifter this turn, that'd be bad. But he didn't. So just let my armor die. Alright, my opponent would be insane if we keep on attacking, but I mean he didn't. Good. <laughs> or I mean bad, but he probably he probably shouldn't have been attacking all along. I mean, was he gonna raise me? No way. And he if I had a ninja somewhere along these draws, he'd been he had been in huge trouble. Yeah, so that's the thing about these fairy decks. You're not going to beat it with removal, so... Like, you need a lot of value to actually be able to keep up with fairies. Like, if you just kind of side in mono, mono, like... Oh, right, my opponent didn't know. Oh, that's right, I didn't show my opponent fairies. That's why my opponent is, like, siding like this. With duresses, even. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Alright, well I'm going to go for the kill this turn. I mean sure go for the kill this turn because well eh, whatever I could use shadow rift but I'm gonna alpha alpha strike anyways inside out All right, GGs. So yeah, uh, fairies are very strong against removal decks. Um, so kind of a synergy going on here. Like I think uh, probably tribe by itself would be kind of vulnerable. Some of some of what's going on here, but uh, along with fairies, it kind of you can kind of just push through them. All right, GGs.